Jim had a sweetness about him that uh, he certainly wasn't offensive when he gave the gospel. The gospel may be in a stumbling block to others, but it wasn't in the manner in which he delivered it. He was tender and loving, and you could just sense it all around him when he wanted to talk to someone about Christ. He really cared about who he talked about when he talked about Christ. He wasn't concerned as to whether or not he had a, gun, a notch on the spiritual gun belt. He cared about whether or not they really knew Christ. And that's, that's unique. What I'd like to do is see if we can have a mic. Who's, who's got that mic? There, it's right back over here. If you'd like to share a snapshot of Jim's life with us and why it was so meaningful to you, just raise your hand and the mic right over here. You want to introduce yourself as you get the mic? That's fine. Hi, my name's Rob, and uh, <clears throat> I'll speak for my wife and myself. Maybe. Um, I think my snapshot was about six months ago. And uh, I was teaching Sunday school. And this uh, young couple comes into Sunday school, I've never seen it before sit right down close to the front of the classroom and um, we began our class. A lot of discussion we have in our class. And Jim began to, to interact with us immediately. And uh, it was one of those times when you just connect with someone, you know? And not knowing them, but it's, it is a spiritual issue. And I began to sense Jim's passion for the Word of God. Never dimmed at all in the time. Faithfully, he and his wife would come each Sunday and uh, participate and always encourage us through the Word of God. And I've known people my whole life. I don't know that I know anyone who has had more impact on my heart and my love for the Word of God than Jim in just six months. Um, my wife reminded me as I was, like many of you, grieving a bit, but not as those who have no hope. But nonetheless, grieving and wondering, oh, I just seem like such a short time. Why just such a short time? And uh, she blesses me often with her perspective, and it was this. Just imagine all the places in the world where God could have sent Jim Jones for the last six months of his life. But in his grace and his love, he sent him to us that we would have that time of fellowship and encouragement with him. And I do thank and praise the Lord for that time. And one last picture is that Jim is like a comet. You know how a comet starts off and this comes flying through and it's just brighter than everyone and then it's gone. Jim was a comet. He brought light into this fellowship. He brought encouragement. He brought a new hunger and a joy for the Word of God and to share that Word of God with those who are lost. And I thank God so much for the privilege of knowing Jim and in some ways I'm just a bit jealous. <laughs> I'm uh, Jim Flannery, so of the Thunder Motorcycle Club. We do Jim a long time, and he, uh, we do a lot of events around town. We do a lot of stuff at Riverside Park, and Dutch Brothers on 6th Street. That's one of our mission fields. <laughs> and almost every time we're out doing something, Jim would come by, and he'd have a new tool. And he's twinkling in his eye, and say, look what I got, man. I'm going to get him with this. <laughs> but the thing that really, really, he did a little thing. I don't know if anybody knows, everybody probably knows it, but he would go to the DMV before it opened. And he had his little box, and he'd get on his box, and he would preach the gospel right there, before. And then it was like a captive audience, you know, they didn't want to place in line. He <laughs> just sunk it to him. It was cool. Jim was cool. His whole, it's reflected in his family. We're Sunday school teachers, too. And uh, his children were in our class, and their children. Jim, I was going to be missed. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
I'm Mrs. Fry. Um, <laughs> Um, I'm Willow's, te was Willow's teacher last year at New Hope Christian School, and I think the best picture I have of Jim is through his children, um, through Willow. And she would often come in the morning and she would say, oh, Dad did this last night. Dad had this joke. I have to tell you this joke. Um, I have to tell you this. I have to tell you that. And the picture I have of Jim is that he was a wonderful father, and um, a father who really it was very important to him that his children knew the Lord and that they loved the Lord. And that came through the mouth of his children. Um, and I just think that's a very special, special gift that he gave his kids. Um, just modeling Christ and modeling what was important in life versus what's not really important. Um, I appreciated that. Hi, I'm Pam Meyer. And I've known Jim and Kelly and their family for a few years. And... Um, he, they were part of our home group, and um, what I remember about Jim is that um, he was so full of biblical wisdom and so so um, compassionate. And I think that his compassion for the Lord and for people, wherever they are, whoever they are, it didn't matter to Jim because he was so um, concerned about them and sharing Jesus with them, and that's such an inspiration to me to reach out to people and to let Jesus' love um, shine through me. My name is Paul Pompas, and uh, we attended Bible study with Jim every Sunday. It was just so bright to see his eyes and how alive he was for God's Word. And I remember a time right after the reverse trick-or-treating that I was so excited to see him on Sunday, and I came to him, and we had gotten some tracks for trick-or-treating with the kids in my um, Younger daughter Hannah had gone to the doors where the kids had given her trick or treat candy, and she had reversed trick or treat them at the door. And we, me and Jim, just started talking that day about his life and just the brightness in his eye and how alive God's word was in him. It was wonderful. Okay. Okay. I hear the voice of one cry. I hear the voice of one crying. I hear the voice.